Hi everyone, today I would like to talk on 5 technologies that made a revolution in 2020. And look at the hype cycle to know the life cycle stages of every technology that has gone through. Do you all know the hype cycle? Gartner has published this graph on 1995. Here this graph shows how cutting edge technology gets attention in the middle of the curve and adapts to change people's lives. Looking at this, technology started from the dawn of the beginning. When there is a press release of a product, it gets a lot of attention in the world. After that, it goes into a peak period of excessive expectations. The meaning of hype here is a technology is being able to lift to various places through media. After that, disillusionment. When the media and press totally abandon the topic or technology and the interest goes off, the fact that the technology can prove beneficial or useful to a person's life and this continues to be enlightened. And this is how it follows a cycle process. 2019 hype cycle looks like this. Well, various technologies are lined up in a row, so you can see it at a glance. First of all, I would like to focus to this big piece. If you look at the 5G biochips, air pass, edge analytics, autonomous driving are in peak key position. Well, the 5G is fifth generation line and a mobile communication technology. I think this is getting a lot of attention right now. 2018, the 5G position is different from 2019. It is still in early stage. As of 2018, IoT carbon nanotube deep neural nets, which is the deep learning, was in peak period. But it's fine. I think there are many other keywords that you may be familiar with. Okay, the hype table it looks like this when we compare 2018 and 2019. Well, I'd like to cut only the main technologies from peak period and disillusioning period. First of all, 5G. As mentioned earlier, it is the first technology that has entered the peak key from the dawn period. I will explain this later and the second is blockchain. As of 2018, it was between the peak key and disillusionment period, but now this is gone. However, a decentralized web system has emerged, but in reality, the blockchain technology is deeply related to this. It can be said that it is almost a blockchain technology. Maybe in a better way, it is a concrete that uses blockchain. The point is that it is re-entered at the early stage again. And the third one is that something like well, AR has disappeared from the disillusionment period. But then in 2019, it is appeared as AR cloud. And it's just similar to the blockchain as we saw before. Next is mixed reality technology and augmented reality. They have similar relationship. As we can see, MR also disappeared, but it has been combined with AR cloud on 2019. The fourth technology is AI pass. But as of 2018, AI pass was at early stage. On 2019, the same AI pass entered the peak stage, where edge AI is still near the dawn and peak period. So the point of AI is there are a lot are coming in to attract attention. Lastly, the IoT platform. This has disappeared on 2019, but there are some IoT related deep cases like cargo delivery drones, flying autonomous vehicles, and so on. I think that this technology has changed our daily lives. So I will take up these five technologies and briefly explain each one of them. Okay, let's go back to the first, 5G. It has become the fifth generation communication technology and has features such as high speed, large capacity, low latency, low delay between the sending and receiving of information from a device to a server and multi-connectivity. So this 5G will enable realistic use of rich digital content. 5G for consumers means not just faster mobile internet but mainly internet connectivity in many more objects. The cars and the houses are the big two examples in IoT revolution which is supported by 5G networks. And the truth is, 5G requires us to upgrade to a new phone with the right hardware inside. The second is Edge AI which is a combination of edge computing and artificial intelligence. It's like where overall composition of AI happens. This is the AI function to the cloud computing. To be specific, I will take Alexa, the smart speaker, as an example because it's easy to understand. For example, let's ask Alexa. Alexa, 
what's tomorrow's weather. Here, the smart speaker picked up the voice and collect the data in the cloud via internet. There are many others also trying to connect in this cloud by asking questions in natural language. That's how the big data is collected and here it makes inferences as AI. In this case, tomorrow's weather is processed in natural language. Once you have that data, you will get it eventually from your smart device over the internet. And tomorrow's weather will be rainy or there is a 10% of chance that it won't rain. Alexa would answer it after collect the data from internet and the both learning and inferences are done here. Nowadays, the fact that it is done in the cloud. These are the key process of cloud computing. However, in cloud computing, there are actually various types of security issues, for example, hijacking of accounts. All the content that you speak, search on your smartphone and smart speaker are collected on the cloud. For example, whatever you buy or do every day, your history of activities has been moved to the cloud and tapped by Amazon, Facebook or other big companies. The process is like that. There are quite a lot of people worried about the security concern. And I think it's not good after all because all the information have been leaked. However, there is a latency issue in the smart speaker or smartphones. There are delays from one device to internet. All data it is processed in the cloud via the internet. When it comes to that, the physical distance is quite long. Even in 5G, there is a feature that have a low delay. So we aren't sure how long the time delays would occur and if possible, we want to reduce the time delays from one physical device to internet. And it is necessary to adopt the idea of edge computing on the site. The idea is to divide the roles between the cloud and the edge that has a closed connection to the device. From what we have seen, the learning and inference is processed in the cloud. But with this idea, edge computing only sends the necessary data to the cloud. From the previous example of smart speaker, using this edge computing, some functions are stored and infer data to some extent. So, the weather of tomorrow will be voiced out first from the smart speaker with less time delays. This road is not through the cloud and now it is mid between this base station. The process is like the AI makes inferences in the mid and return to the device. By doing this in terms of security, you can assure that not everything will be collected in the cloud. Physically, the distance is shortened, so low latency is guaranteed. Well, there are various merits, so in order to handle it as a big data, it collects larger data from the cloud. So this is very important. It ensures the sufficient security before you get the necessary information like this. Autonomous driving. Using AI, for example, we could identify how many meters away a car is. If you try to do it with this cloud, the delay will be very large. But the age AI, it could judge in low latency in how far you might collide with someone. Amazing, isn't it? The third is light cargo delivery drones. It is a low cost item to deliver by drones. Now, Amazon's primer is very popular. This is a commercial service that will be released within few months. Amazon said it will deliver packages up to 5 pounds, which is 2.25 kg, in 30 minutes or less using small drones. And the US FAA approves delivery companies like UPS and Amazon on adoption of drone deliveries, where UPS make possibilities on rapid transport of life-saving medical supplies and the accelerated door-to-door -door delivery of an online shopper's holiday presents. Right now, UPS expanding drone delivery service to new hospitals and campus environments around the country. And also, UPS partnering with drone manufacturers to build drone hardware and software. So, there are many upcoming projects. After all, it is possible that items can be delivered to near ports by drone. The delivery of drones is now very advanced. Let's move to fourth technology. The fourth is AR Cloud. What is this? As I said, it is a mixture of AR and MR. It has overall concept of real-world applications. The best example is Pokemon Go, the game where users can catch Pokemon, which is hiding in the world around them. The technology makes them appear as if they are existing in the real world. Another example, if a skeleton placed in a classroom, students able to study the skeleton system from the real object. But when the object is not there, it is impossible to create a state to make the object visible. 
Well, this is possible with AR cloud technology. When the object is not there, people are still able to see the skeleton by putting on AR glasses. This AR technology collects all the 3D maps as an information and linking them with 3D objects. So it is possible to record the real time and how the object looks alike and able to share it with multiple users. We might think that we may be able to record it always with AR Cloud, but in reality, there are quite a few hurdles. For example, it is difficult to capture a map of any country's rail. I think it will be a burden how to capture it in 3D space. It needs huge amount of information, so have to cooperate with AR. This technology is a dramatic innovation. Now, Apple is creating AR apps and there are many on App Store. Example, AR kits, AR home designs and so on. Google are doing more with AR and helping us throughout our day, such as AR in the Pixel camera, AR in apps, AR in Google search and more. The fifth is decentralized web. This is also called as Web 3.0. It's easy to identify the major differences between Web 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0. 1.0 where users passively consult web pages and for the most part don't participate in generating content. But then during Web 2.0 users they participate, they create content and interact with sites and with each other through social media, forums, YouTube, email, Google and etc. Where 3.0 has blockchain support. Okay, we are in a situation where some huge IT companies collecting our personal data. By the way, I usually use Gmail, Google Photos, YouTube and etc. But all of them are from Google. So it collects data in one place which is inevitable. Therefore security risks increase and there are privacy concerns. Web 3.0 It directs the communication between individuals without an intermediary. A simple example to explain the situation. When we deposit money in a bank, the bank keeps record of every transaction. So, in this case, I deposit $10,000 and withdraw $10,000 a week later. Then a person named John deposit $10,000. The bank records the full history of transactions. We know that it is a reliable institution and know the records management. And here, the blockchain plays a role as the bank. It eliminates the intermediary companies to record our personal data. So it's true now with Web 3.0 that the personal era is accelerating steadily. Finally, I have covered 5G, Edge AI, light cargo delivery drones, AR cloud, decentralized web topics today. And I hope the contents are easy to understand and I would appreciate if you like the video. Thanks for watching.